As a Bluey fan, one would expect an episode of the show to run for 7 minutes. For the most part, Ludo Studio has done a good job sticking to this format, with only small exceptions existing. Sleepy Time and Dragon each ran for 7.5 minutes, and Pass the Parcel and Trades ran for 8. I'm not going to count Exercise being trimmed down to 6 minutes due to its opening scene attracting controversy because that wasn't even how the episode was originally presented in its first airing. For the longest time, those were the only exceptions that existed and they were very minor. But then, in November 2023, an announcement was made, revealing an upcoming Bluey episode that's hyped up as their biggest Bluey ever, and it was officially released worldwide on ABC iView and Disney Plus on April 14th, 2024. This episode of Bluey is called The Sign. As a result of its length, The Sign was probably the most anticipated Bluey episode of all time. It didn't run for twice as long as an average episode, it didn't run for three times as long, it was four times as long at 28 minutes. Ever since the announcement, we've had many questions on our minds about what the plot to a 28 minute Bluey episode on TV would be. Not to mention, if it's a 28 minute episode, that would mean the animators and others involved put a lot of work into it, meaning they had to have come up with a story that's worth the longer runtime. More so than Bluey's big play I was thinking, and that one was longer. With all the statements Joe Brumman made regarding certain elements of the show people had questions about, such as the absence of Grandpa Bob and the relationship between Rat and Frisky, there was a lot of speculation about what the sign would be about. But as more and more trailers and TV spots get showed, we've started putting a few pieces together. It was about time, too, because the wait to hear about the plot killed us just as much as the wait for the episode itself. I think we've wasted enough time, so let's get straight to the review. For those who still haven't seen the episode yet, consider this a spoiler alert. That was your warning. Now, before we talk about the sign, we need to address the episode immediately before Ghost Basket. So far, it seemed like a tradition that once every season there is an episode where the grannies Janet and Rita play a major role in the story. It was Grannies for Season 1, Bus for Season 2, and Granny Mobile for Season 3. Well, with Season 3, I guess they really wanted to have another episode with the Granny, so here it is. Not only do the Grannies play a major role in this episode, it's basically setting up what will happen in the side. The episode begins with Bandit acting as an estate agent that's trying to sell the house to Chili. Unfortunately, the grannies that live in the house are in no mood to leave, and constantly pester the intruders. But then things get crazy when Bingo hides under a laundry basket and pursues everyone through the hallways in some gag you've definitely seen in Scooby-Doo. Obviously, the act of hiding under the laundry basket is to scare off potential buyers thinking the house is haunted. But then after Chili buys the house and the grannies are kicked out, Bandit actually has a little plan with the grannies to give Chili the scare of her life. Ghost Basket is not really anything ultra spectacular. On the surface, it's just a simple playtime episode, much like Trains and Taxi. But the actual heart of the episode is at the last shot after Chili runs out the front porch. The camera zooms back and we see a for sale sign on the healer's front lawn, indicating that the house really was put up for sale. This has been a speculation by the fan base for some time about what the plot, or at least a major element, to the sign would be, and the ending of this episode has just confirmed it. Even before Ghost Basket was put on the air, anticipation for the sign had continued to grow and revealed new details. There's the return of an old friend, indicated by the Ulysses butterfly that Bingo and Leela saved in Slide when it was still just a caterpillar. That's lucky. Then we have some romance, which in one of the teasers, one of the terriers tells Winton that their mother likes his father, in reference to a brief scene in TV shop. It is eventually revealed through another trailer that the main event would be a wedding between Rad and Frisky, which fans have been waiting for a while, and even Joe Brum himself admitted he wanted to show what an Australian wedding looked like. We also have adventure, and the teaser gives us a taste of that adventure when we see Chili getting pulled over by the police. 
You can access more of these signs by visiting the Bluey website. There's a digital wedding invitation, an interview with Dave McCormick and Melanie Zanetti about the special, and information on a character named Bucky Dunstan, a toy fox terrier that first appeared in Dragon, being the kid that criticized Bandit's car drawings. That doesn't look like a car! In the sign, he's grown up now, voiced by Rove McManus, and is a real estate agent who is selling the healer house, which is probably where the kids got the ghost basket idea from. What happens next? If you wanted to find out what else was going to happen, you had to watch the episode yourself. In fact, we wasted enough time beating around the bush, so let's just get on with it. Remember, there's spoilers here. Just wanted to make sure you knew that. A recurring theme in this episode is about how scary and uncertain our future could be. The first sign of this is literally a sign, a for sale sign in the healer's front lawn. Throughout the episode, we find that Bluey is upset about moving to a new location because that means she'll have to go to a new school and she won't be seeing her friends again. What? But then Calypso tells the class a story about a farmer whose horse runs away, which looks like bad luck. But when the horse returns, it turns out she brought three other horses with her, which looks like good luck. But when the farmer's son tries to ride one of the wild horses, he fell and broke his leg, which looks like bad luck. But when the soldiers started drafting men for war, they didn't take the farmer's son because of his broken leg, which looks like good luck. Point is, you never know what life will throw at you, and you're never certain whether your story will have a happy ending or a sad ending, or both. But either way, things will work out one way or another. But seeing as this is a 28 minute episode, there's more to the story than this, isn't there? Well, before they move out, they plan to hold a wedding in their backyard for Bandit's older brother Rad, who's going to marry Frisky. About time that happened. We've only seen their relationship building over the span of two different episodes, but still enough time passing that something new will come to the Healer family. But a bombshell is dropped when Frisky learns that Rad plans to move out of the city as well, and out of anger, Frisky cancels the wedding. The wedding's off. What? So it's pretty clear that Bluey and Frisky have a similar problem in common. Neither of them want to move out of their home. After Frisky drives off, Chili drives after her, accompanied by the Flower Girls, Bluey, Bingo, Muffin, and Socks. From there, it's a long adventure to find Frisky, calm her down, and bring her back to the house so the wedding can be held. A few things happen along the way. Chili gets pulled over by Constable Joel Edgerton. Socks needs to use the toilet in the middle of a high-speed chase once they have Frisky in their sights. I'm Chili. I need the toilet. Oh, Socks. Then, as luck would have it, a familiar creature comes along to give the healer some hope. Oh, hello, Good to see you again. It's possible that it's either the same butterfly Bingo and Leela saved a while back, or it's just another Ulysses butterfly. Either way, it helped the family locate Frisky at a spot she frequented as a teenager to do... teenager things. Frisky and I used to come up here as teenagers to, um, think. Thank you. This is where the concept of moving starts to become a bit more clear to Bluey. Throughout the episode, whenever the move is brought up, Chili feels unease. But still, she tried to put on a brave face for Bluey, which she never realized until she talked about it, and the idea of how uncertain the future is comes up again. I wish I could tell you which one it was going to be, but I don't know. I guess we'll see. Actually, I understand this feeling of the move very well. I've lived in a few different houses during my lifetime, and I've never been certain about it at first. But things do soon work out just fine, even with the uncertainties. It's watching this episode that helps me understand all the more that it's not just me that feels uncertain about change. Of course it's inevitable, but it's never something I'm ready for. Bluey and Frisky weren't ready for their change either, but who knows what'll happen. The future really can go many different ways. Speaking of which, here's something else interesting that happens after Rad finds Frisky and the two make up. It's when the wedding guests arrive, including Chili's sister Brandy, who's... pregnant? This was already accidentally revealed early when an Australian release trailer for the sign came out, but in later trailers they would crop the shot to keep it a surprise. But when we first met Brandy in the episode onesies, it's greatly implied that she's suffering from infertility. There's something Auntie Brandy wants more than anything as well, but she can't have it because it's not meant to be. Now, I know that infertility is not the same as sterility as I used to think when I made my Top 30 Bluey episodes video, and it was never explicitly stated in the episode itself, but it sure surprised me a lot to see this. The reveal of a baby bump in the sign garnered some mixed reactions. On one hand, people felt that not only could it alienate those with infertility issues that connected with Brandy for that reason, it kind of dampened the message in onesies, which is you can't always have the things you want and there's nothing you can really do about it. On the other hand, it's possible she took some medication for her issue, or maybe infertility wasn't the cause of her sad state. 
Maybe that's part of it, but maybe she's just extra sad because, like her sister, she had also suffered a miscarriage. Though not after Chili's miscarriage, because if that was the cause of the argument that limited their contact, if they both suffered a miscarriage at that point, that would just be heartless for both sisters. But anyway, prior to the side, she would find the courage to try again at motherhood. Maybe Brandy being pregnant is an attempt to give those suffering from fertility issues hope that they could still be mothers if they're willing to keep pushing forward, which was the message pushed in the show. Though this is Brandy we're talking about, not Chili. It's kind of odd that they try to attach the same message to a different character in this way. I mean, it's not like Onesie's ever made explicit specifications, so I'm admittedly on the fence about this. My biggest question, though, is if Brandy's pregnant, who's the father and why is he here at the wedding? If they gave Brandy one more episode before the sign, it's possible we might have had that question answered. But here's a note we can all agree on. It's nice to see confirmation that Grandpa Bob is in fact alive. Before this episode came out, a lot of people were under the impression that since Grandpa Bob first appeared in Grannies and was never seen again except for a flashback scene in Fairy Tale, his absence is never addressed in Christmas Swim, and in Bedroom, Bingo says, Good night, Grandpa Bob, wherever you are. That would have to mean Grandpa Bob had passed away sometime after Grannies. This thought process continued among a good number of fans even after Joe Brum had made a statement that Grandpa Bob is alive and would later be appearing in a special episode. Well, here he is. He and his wife are crying at their oldest son's wedding. The explanation is that he was away in India to find himself. Why do you need to find yourself? Why? Who cares? He's alive! Now will you go away? Then during the reception, Rad and Frisky announced that they are not moving out of the city after all, and then everyone starts dancing to some familiar music cues. Notice this track from Musical Statues? That's what I'm talking about! Get that buddy moving! <laughs> How about this one? I know you know this track. But even after that night of joy, we gotta get back to the sad stuff. The house has officially been sold to the couple that wanted to buy it. It's also worth noting that while Bingo was okay with selling the house throughout the entire episode, that's actually because she didn't truly understand the implications of what happens when you sell a house, even though the kids played a game about this scenario in the previous episode. I thought we sold it but still lived in it. No, honey. We're moving to another city. To cheer Bingo up, Bluey tells her the story Calypso told the class. Once upon a time, there was a farmer who owned a horse called Midnight. But one day, Midnight ran away. In the next shot, we see those buyers in the location where the healers found Frisky, and here's another moment where the uncertain future takes an unexpected turn. Earlier in the search for Frisky, Bluey finds a coin on the floor of a juice shop, and Muffin tries using it on one of those pay binoculars, but she puts it in the wrong slot, and now the coin is stuck. Also, Bluey referred to this coin as a lucky coin, which turned out to be very true when the couple that wanted to buy the house got it out of that jam and tried using the binoculars to look for the house that they're buying. But then they find that Winton's father, who had just started dating the terrier's mother, is also selling his house. The couple was hoping to have a pool come with their new house, and Winton's house just happens to have a pool. As the family starts heading out the door of their now empty house, we hear a beautiful Meg Washington song. But then through the inaudible dialogue, we gather that Bucky has called Bandit to tell him that the couple won't be buying the healer house anymore, so he takes the sign out of the lawn and everyone is happy. Oh my gosh, how incredible. Looks like the healers are here to stay. To be honest, I was kind of expecting something like this. Moving the healers to a brand new location would have meant designing whole new backdrops and characters to replace the old ones, basically starting over from scratch. I wouldn't imagine that being too ideal for a show targeted toward preschoolers, especially since production on this one had only been on hiatus after season 3 was completed. But wasn't it just so happy watching the kids running through the hallways with glee and the family unpacking the stuff they've packed to put everything back in its place? Well, they haven't finished that yet, but they just got started. Give them a couple days, which I'm going to translate into being the next episode, and everything will be back the way it used to be. The world could just explode right there. I never thought I'd say this, but I'd go so far as to say it's my favorite Bluey episode. 
it's not just because of its runtime. I mean, it was a pretty big runtime compared to the rest of the episodes. But with such a big runtime compared to the others, you're going to have to take the time to come up with a story that's worth the longer runtime without feeling too long. And that's precisely what was done here. They had a big story, and they shared it with us in a very evenly paced special. It still manages to maintain what makes Bluey such a beloved work of art. Splendid animation, great comedy, while also being a roller coaster of emotions, and also delivers a brilliant message about the future. I have a feeling that we may not get another episode quite like this. But, we'll see. This is where I'd end things, but here's a bonus. It would only be fair to assume that if the sign runs for 28 minutes, that would make it the Season 3 finale. But on the contrary, there's another episode that closes off Season 3, and it runs for the average runtime of a Bluey episode. This episode of Bluey is called Surprise! With what the sign delivered, I can't imagine this one living up to those expectations, but the episode is called Surprise! Probably because it's a surprise episode that wasn't even announced along with Ghost Basket and the sign, but probably also because Ludo Studio hopes to surprise your expectations. So let's take a look. The premise for this episode is that Bandit is tasked with playing two different games with his kids. With Bingo, he's got to take care of her kids, which are basically tennis balls as heads on these stubby coolers. Meanwhile, Blue is all geared up like Mega Man with futuristic armor and a ball blaster. Her game is a very special variant of hide and seek. Let me explain. Bandit would just be minding his own business, maybe trying to watch a wheelchair race on TV, but then when he gets near where Blue is hiding, she immediately leaps out and opens fire. Basically, Bandit's in a similar spot as Bluey was in the episode Postman. If you remember the episode, Bluey sets up a game of Postman after hearing her parents in a disagreement, hoping to keep their marriage together. But also, she is reminded that she was supposed to be playing Grounds Lava with Bingo, so she had to play both games at the same time. Same as in Surprise, but the circumstances are different. The kids play different games with Bandit because, well, they're kids. Okay, being serious, Blue is only borrowing that equipment, and she really wants to use it. Aw, oh, but Chucky only let me this for today, and I really want to play Surprise! It makes it a challenge for Bandit to keep up with Bingo's kids and get to the safe zone as quick as possible for less ball torture. Okay, that sounded a bit more crazy out of context. There's a few reasons I can think of for why this episode served as a season finale instead of the sign. First off, the emotional impact Ludo must have predicted the sign would leave on the audience. They were right to have that gut feeling. The sign left a lot of parents crying, especially during the final act. So after all that trauma, we needed something a bit more lighthearted to close off the season. Second, the title itself, which I've already talked about. They didn't acknowledge the episode's existence until the day came. Third, much like Camping and Daddy Drop-Off, this episode also has a flash-forward sequence. First, let's talk about the message of the episode. At the beginning, Bluey wanted to know what it was like being a parent. What is having children like? Oh, well, it's a bit hard to explain. Oh, I want to know. Not to worry, Bluey starts to get her answers soon enough when Band is talking to one of Bingo's kids, whose tennis ball head is too big for the stubby cooler. You've got a whole bunch of brothers and sisters who've got your back. And your mum and I are behind you all the way. Because we're a family. And you mean the world to us. Bluey then offers to look after the kid while Bandit takes care of the rest, basically telling us that we should always be there to give our family the support they need, no matter how hard the work. The last scene is the flash-forward scene, where Bluey, as an adult, visits her parents who are still living in the same house. Chili even jokingly takes a jab at the events of the sign. Can you believe Dad almost sold it? <laughs> are you ever gonna let that go? The original plan was that the sign would be the season finale, but because of that little reference, they needed to change the order a little bit. Then in one final shot, Bandit answers the door, and waiting just outside is a kid with a ball blaster similar to the one Bluey borrowed years ago. There's a lot of speculation about who the father is, and the two most popular candidates for this debate are Mackenzie and Jean-Luc. Mackenzie because of the floppy ear, and Jean-Luc because of the dark purple coloring. That shipping war has been taking place on the internet for a while, and it seems like this episode fueled it even further. Personally, if they ever reveal officially who the father is, and I don't think they should unless the time is right or something, I wouldn't care which one if it is one of the two, though it could also be someone Bluey met in her teen or adult years, not in her childhood. 
But wait, how do we know that Bluey was even the mother? Couldn't it just as easily be Bingo's child? But just hold your horses if you think Bingo's the mother. Stop and think about this for a second. If Bingo was the mother, wouldn't that undermine the narrative of the episode? The one that was set up right at the beginning? Bluey was the one who had the question of parenthood, not Bingo. And besides, when Bluey comes to visit her parents, she's got gray hairs just like her parents. And the reason her parents had gray hairs is because they have been parents. I don't care who the father is, but can't we just accept that Bluey's the mother? That's exactly what the narrative is pointing to, and why should we have it any other way? Anyway, this is a great way to close off the third season, especially if you thought we needed a more light-hearted episode after what we saw in The Sign. I know for a fact that my mind was in many different places after the special ended. I felt like I had completed so many life achievements at once. I don't know, I guess all I'm trying to say is, I'm glad they released Surprise when they did. I wouldn't say it's as worthy of a season finale as The Sign, but it still managed to hit the right notes, mixing fun child's play with a heartwarming message about how we should care for our family. We may not get season 4 for a while, but at least we got 20 minisodes coming this summer to hold us over. Short little snippets, but it's gotta be done. <laughs>